Hi guys. This is D. Igorotech. Today, I will show you how to configure 40 gate firewall from a scratch or out of the box. This will be the first video of this series. I will explain it to you in detail and we will do it step by step. This series would be for beginners and I hope every one of you will learn something after this series. For this series, we will use this 4860F device. If you don't have any 40 gate device then you can download and install the 40 gate virtual machine for you to follow along until the end of this series. You can find the installation guide with free download link on the description below or you can search on my channel. For the latest 40 gate virtual machine, it has no expiration but has limited interfaces. For the older versions, it's only valid for 30 days but it has more interfaces available. For these entry-level appliances like this 60 series, they do not have a management port. Unlike mid-range appliances like 100 series and above, which have their own management port. The management port can be used for remote management and configuration of a networking device. You will use an Ethernet cable for management ports and basically for GUI or for web interface management. On the other hand, we also have the console port which is for CLI management, Mostly of the network devices have this console port for CLI management. You will need RJ45 or USB serial cable to connect to this port. For these entry-level appliances without a management port, you can manage it through any of the LAN interfaces. In my case, I directly connected my laptop to port 1. You will notice that the LED indicator for that interface will be active. Let's now open a web browser. Enter HTTPS followed by the 40 gate default IP address which is 192.168.1.99. Hit enter. Click advanced. Click proceed. Every time you factory reset the 40 gate device or newly out of the box, you will use this default IP address to manage or access the device. If you cannot access or ping the default IP address then check your network settings. To do this, Open your network connections. Look for your LAN network adapter. Right click on it then properties. Click on internet protocol version 4. Properties. Make sure to choose obtain an IP address automatically. This will set your network adapter to DHCP. The 40 gate device DHCP server has been configured by default so your PC or laptop will automatically receive an IP address from the 40 gate. Alternatively, you can set your IP address statically. Choose use the following IP address. Make sure to set the IP address within the same subnet. In my case, I will use 192.168.1.100 with slash 24 subnet mask. No need to enter the default gateway for now since we are going to change it later. Click OK to apply the changes. By now, you should be able to access the device default IP address. Now, we will log into the device. The default username is admin with no password. Enter admin on the username, password is blank so simply hit login. You are required to change the default password. For the old password, just leave it blank. Enter your desired password then also confirm your password. Click OK. Now you need to re-enter the username and the newly created password. You will be asked to perform the 40 gate setup. Choose later. You can watch the video or you can click on don't show again then click OK. You will be redirected to the device dashboard. Let's have a quick look on the dashboard. At the top left, you can see the device hostname which by default is the device model. I will show you how to change this later on. You can also view the system information from here. The hostname. Device serial number. The firmware version which is version 7.2.4. This was the latest version at the time of this recording. If you are running the older version then I suggest you upgrade first to the latest stable version before you proceed with the configuration. You can check my other video on how to upgrade 40 gate firmware. Operation mode is NAT. System time. This is the device date and time. I will show you how to change it later. Next is the uptime. This is how long the device is up and running. In my case, 
you can see that this device has been running for approximately 33 minutes. Lastly, the WAN IP. It is still unknown because this device is not yet connected or can access the internet. Next is the license information. 40 care support is pending because it's not yet connected to the internet. You can see the license expiration from here. In my case, this device license will expire on October 1st, 2023. The license will include the firmware and general update. IPS. Antivirus. Web filtering etc. You can check my other video for the licensing details explanation. 40 Cloud and Security Fabric also will be on a different video. Next is the administrators. This window is where you can monitor current admin users. In my case, notice that there is one HTTPS currently connected and you can see it's the user is admin which is under super admin profile. Next is the CPU process. You can see that the process is very low because the device has no configuration yet. For the monitoring, you can change it by minute, by hour or by hours based on your preference. Same with the memory and session monitoring process, you can change the time based on your likings. You can add more widgets for better live monitoring and also for your troubleshooting reference. To do this, go back to the top of the page then click on add widgets. You can choose what you want to add. Click show more to view more options. Scroll down for more categories. For this demo, we will add network interface. Go to network. Choose interface bandwidth. For fabric member, leave it to default. Expand the interface options. You can choose which interface or port you want to monitor. We will choose WAN 1. Click on it to select. Now, click add widget. You will see a notification at the bottom. Interface bandwidth added successfully. Close the window to go back to the dashboard. Scroll down and you will see the newly added widget. You can also change the time view based on your liking. At the top right of the window, you can see the CLI console. Click on it to access the CLI console. Here, you can enter the command lines. The next icon is help. Click on it to view the options available. Next is the notification icon. Lastly, the current user. You can see I'm currently logged in as admin. Expand the down arrow to view other options. The top is the device model, followed by the firmware version. Under system, we have the option to reboot, shut down, fabric management and process monitor. Under configuration, we have the option to backup, restore, revisions and scripts. You can also directly change your password from here. We will dive in deeper on the other videos. Lastly, logout. Click on it if you want to exit or close this GUI or web management. Next is the monitoring. For the 40 OS version 6.4 and above, they consolidated the monitor and 40 view sections of the GUI into the dashboard section. You need to add the monitoring manually for each category. For this demo, we are going to add the routing monitor. Click the plus sign or add monitor. You can see all the available options again from here. I suggest you take some time to review these different categories. Since we're going to add the routing monitor then it should be on network category. Click on routing. You can give a name based on your preference or leave it to default. Expand the view type and you will see other available options. For this demo, we will choose static and dynamic. Now, click Add Monitor. Notice that we already have the routing monitor on the dashboard panel. Click on it. Here, you can view all the running routes. You can also view other routing options. We can also add device inventory. Click on Add Monitor again. Scroll down and look for User and Authentication. Click Device Inventory. You can modify based on your preference then click Add Monitor. Now, the device inventory monitor has been added. This will detect and identify all the connected devices on the network but you need also to enable the device detection on the interface settings which I will show you later. You can also choose to show software OS if you prefer. We will get back to this after we configure the device to show you and explain more details. Now, 
If you click on the three dots icon, you will have the option to edit monitor if you want to edit the name. Delete if you want to delete the shortcut added. Add favorite. Once you click favorite then favorite category will be automatically added at the top of the window. If you click on that category then you will see all the monitoring you just added as favorite. To remove from favorites, click on the three dots icon again. You can click on remove favorite or delete monitor if you want to delete the shortcut. You can also rearrange the shortcuts based on your preference. Click and hold the eight dots icon and place it where you want to be. To hide the left panel, you can click on the three line icon and you will have a full view. Click on it again to unhide the left panel. Now, you can use the search feature. Click on the search icon then enter what you want to search. We can try interface, hit enter. Here, you can see all the interface related. You can also see the location which is under network then interfaces. You can click on it or click on navigate menu and you will be redirected to that window. As you can see, we've been redirected to network, interfaces. Let's go back to that search menu and use the category. For now, let's search for policy. We only have one result. You can see it's under policy and objects then firewall policy. You can use the category from search option. If we enable that option then it will not search in that category. You can also sort by A to Z, Z to A or relevance. At the right side you can see the recent searches and also frequent searches. Next is we will check the settings. Go to system. Settings. For the host name, usually, we will enter the company name. Well, this depends on your preference. For this demo, we will change it to Igorotech. Next is the system time. You can see the current system time. If you are on different location or country then change the time zone. In my case, I'm currently in Malaysia right now so I have to change to GMT plus 8. The date and time are also very important when it comes to troubleshooting and checking the logs. For the other details, you can leave it to default. For the administrative access I will explain in the next video. Next is the idle timeout. Currently it's set to 5 minutes. This means, you will be kicked out or automatically log out every after 5 minutes of inactivity. I suggest you set it to longer period because 5 minutes is too short. Even if you grab some coffee and once you come back you already been kicked out. Let's change it to 30 minutes for this demo. Next is the configuration mode. We have two options which is automatic and manual. You can hover your cursor to the i logo or information for more details. Automatic is it will automatically save your configuration changes. Manual is you need to manually save your configuration once ready for it to take effect. You can also enable the revert upon timeout and set the time based on your preference. For this feature, I suggest you leave it to default which is automatic. You can also change the language from here. Expand the down arrow and you will see more options. Select your preferred language then click apply to save the changes. Next is the theme. The default theme is Jade. You can test other themes by simply clicking on it. Once you choose your preferred theme then click apply to save the changes. Before we click apply, let's go back to the host name. Notice the current host name which is the device model. Once we click apply then it will be changed to the new host name. You can see that the host name has been changed and also the idle timeout has been changed to 30 minutes. In the next video, I will show you how to configure LAN, VLANs, DHCP and DNS. Well, that's all for today's demonstration and I really hope you liked this video. If you are new to my channel, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and click on the notification bell for more amazing tutorials. Thank you and see you in the next video.